we have been fooled for a long time in America. We have been taught to believe that America and solely America was that sign and she and there was something different about America. We are exceptional. The truth of the matter, there's no reason that you want to say you're an exceptional country. I mean, we are good people. America is made up of good people, but America was also founded by people that weren't all that good. People that weren't that didn't mind doing a lot of bad things. Does that make America bad? Hell no. What it makes America is like any other country on the planet. But if we have a fallacy that we've lived by all our lives, then we, we try to hide things. Like we try to hide uh, the Black Wall Street in Oklahoma. Like we try to hide Rosewood. Like we try to hide all the massacres against the native people. Like we try to hide all the treaties we've, we've broken while we want everybody else to hold up treaties. That is who we are. We can all get better. We are comprised of a lot of good people as well. But until we get better in being truthful and forget about not trying to teach our kids the truth. Trying to put into law that it's illegal to teach our kids the truth. There would always be a problem. And no one says it better than Eddie Glaude. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. White Americans, maybe some black Americans, ignorant of what happened 100 years ago. Well, Andrew, there's a kind of willful ignorance, and the willful ignorance is aimed at kind of protecting our innocence. You see, we don't want to tell ourselves the truth. I mean, connect this to the arguments around the 1619 Project, the arguments against critical race theory, uh, you know, governors trying to punish uh, school districts who will te teach anything that's divisive uh, with regards to uh, uh, our history. And so the idea is that we don't want to confront what we've done because we're comfortable with who we are. And so we grab our, we clutch our pearls when we have these moments of revelation. Is this who we are? Of course, there are those of us who have lived under the brunt of it all, right? And so when we think about this anniversary of Tulsa, we need to understand it as one among many. Next year, or the, in two years, we will have the anniversary of Rosewood, another event of massacre of, sort, of, this, of this magnitude. And so I think it's really important that President Biden is the first president uh, to acknowledge this. Because as Brian Stevenson says, you know, truth and reconciliation is sequential. First, you have to tell the truth, which is a precondition for reconciliation, which is the basis for repair. So we have to confront what we've done, Andrea, honestly, so that we can finally, finally imagine ourselves differently, or we will stay on this hamster wheel for another generation. But some of this is that it is wiped out of history books. Let me just say, uh, I grew up in a family very involved in and aware of the civil rights movement in the 60s. And until I met the, the pastor from the Vernon Church in Tulsa, until I happened to meet him on an airplane, um, I did not know about Tulsa myself and was deeply engaged in the history of the civil rights movement, uh, knew the family of Michael Schwerner. I mean, you know, in the 60s, when I was still in high school, was was well aware. It was in my in my hometown, in in a northern suburb. Um, desegregation mm -hmm. orders in our in our hometown, and did not know about Tulsa. Now, that's my fault, but I was deeply read. It's not in the history books. There's been a scrub of this. Right. So this is why I call it willful ignorance. Right. Not to reduce it to kind of individual. Uh, absences in our knowledge, right? Or gaps in our knowledge, yeah. right? When I was when I was a young when I was a young student uh, at in, on the coast of Mississippi in my eighth grade history class, right? I, I was enamored by the Civil War, and I found myself attracted to of all people, General Stonewall, why? Stone, uh, General Stonewall uh, Jackson. Why? Because of the way it was taught to me. And so part of what I'm trying to suggest here is that there's there are redactions in our history, Andrea, in order to uphold the myth of who we take ourselves to be, that America must be the shining city on the hill. And in order for us to keep that myth intact, we have to turn a blind eye to the ugliness that makes us who we are. That's not to beat ourselves on the back. It's not to wallow in guilt. It's just simply to confront the truth of our history so that we can actually imagine ourselves otherwise. And that's what it is, confront the truth of who we are. I know we, we, we do that on a personal level all of the times. Haven't you done bad things and atone for it. Our country has done a whole lot of bad things. And what we need to do is atone for it. 
by hiding it and asking others to just not relive it tells a lie. But it doesn't only tell a lie. It's not only something that is mental. It's not only something that is, it is something that if you take a look at what happened at Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by them bombing and destroying that entire area, what it really means is the wealth that was garnered in that neighborhood, the, the millions of dollars that would have been passed down generationally, those, all those people were left with nothing. Their generational wealth was stolen. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.